All right, hello, and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine, and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego, and today I am delighted to be joined all the way from Prague in Czechia, or the Czech Republic, by Jakob Hahn. How are you doing, Jakob? Hi, Jen. Uh, yeah, I'm doing great. Thanks for inviting me for the podcast. Happy to Absolutely. be here. Absolutely. And Jakob is the co-founder and CEO of SalesDoc. With a hands-on approach to sales, he's provided leadership and consulting services to over 150 organizations, uh, including Uber Eats, Microsoft, Ysoft, and Google, helping them set up effective sales processes and implement scalable sales methodologies. And what we're going to talk about today is moving from maybes to close deals, how to structure a predictable sales process. And and let's face it, uh, Jakob, that's a lot of the problem in sales is that you get, you might even get a yes, but it's really a maybe, um, but it doesn't actually yeah. result in anything. So a lot of people get get stuck and stalled in their sales process when they think everything is moving really well. It seems that it's all going great. And then they get this half answer. Which That's maybe true. is the half answer. So, um, from from your experience in working with the companies you worked with, what are some of the reasons why people get stuck at maybes? There are many of them. So, when I look at it, I always say uh, at the beginning it could be either you wrongly qualify, mm-hmm. so you get into the pipeline delays which are shouldn't be there, or uh, then you don't control the process well, so you don't guide a customer through the through the process. Uh, uh, so that the, what causes you to maybe the the problem is also the thing that uh, in the, many of the organization the sales process is vaguely defined so mm-hmm. salespeople don't know what to do and when to do and uh, there's not even like leadership that could challenge the salespeople on the opportunities so mm-hmm. usually when you go for a sales review it goes uh, it goes in a way hey I met this customer he was super optimistic and he, he was super happy about seeing our product service. And he was telling me 10 reasons why they should buy it. So that's how, why I put it into my forecast and I put their 70% mm-hmm. uh, because the, the, they simply have to buy it. If they don't buy it, uh, it will cause them a lot of problems. But the real discussions about how you're in control, you start getting, hey, maybe let's do the pipeline review a little bit differently. Let's mm-hmm. look what we can improve on the pipeline. Uh, let's look at the opportunities in a way is there any reason why we could potentially lose the opportunity? And then you start understanding the gaps which you make on your side. And yeah. usually one of the most common gaps is uh, that you just talk to one person or two, two stakeholders. And, uh, and you talk to them because you enjoy talking to them, they enjoy talking to you. And talking, involving, for instance, C-level into the conversation, uh, it's a little bit uncomfortable, it's out of your comfort zone. And you mm-hmm. would have to you would have to go for it in a way. Hey, so it was a great discussion with you, but can can I talk to your boss yeah. right now about his perspective? And not that many salespeople do that. Mm-hmm. And so we get back to that. Hey, how well is defined your sales process? How well do you follow it? Because one thing mm-hmm. is to have it defined, and then the sales process have have it uh, hidden somewhere in, uh, under your table, <laughs> and not ever getting back to that. Yeah. And the, and the second thing is, hey, maybe don't be the whole, we always try to switch a little bit the mindset of the organizations. Try not to be that uh, optimistic yeah. and uh, looking for the reason why they should buy it, but look for the reason if there's something what can potentially ruin your deal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, no, I, I agree with everything you said. And, and let's talk a little bit about sales process, because as you said, I mean, most organizations, if you say to them, oh, do you have a sales process? They'll go, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. and then you say, okay, um, when was the last time it was updated? Um, well, it's been a while. And you go, okay, so your customer behavior hasn't changed then, I presume. And they're saying, well, yeah, a lot of things have changed, but your sales process hasn't changed, right? And then the second part, as you said, is we have a sales process, but we don't really enforce it and we don't really um, manage it carefully so as you said i may put i may put something in stage three and you put the exact same one in stage five and so the exact same type of one so then we have no consistency exactly 
Exactly. And yeah, some, some of the salespeople, they are sandbaggers, so <laughs> they don't put anything into the pipeline till it's a uh, deal done pretty much. <laughs> hey, I just have this deal. They signed the contract. Uh, yeah. And the other ones are overly optimistic. Mm -hmm. Standardizing, and as you said, standardizing the sales process and explaining very well what stage three means uh, and stage two means is super, uh, super crucial. Because yeah. even doesn't really matter how experienced you are as a salesperson, I close hundreds of deals or maybe <laughs> reaching thousands, I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, and still, I tend to forget uh, if I don't prepare for the meeting if I don't have the sales process in front of me and saying, hey, what do I need to do? Uh, what do I need to do in order to move forward in my process? Yeah, I think I think that's one of the big things that's often uh, often lacking too is not just the defined sales process, but the defined preparation for, say, a sales call, the defined preparation for before you move something from stage to stage, like actually doing the work and figuring out, is this correct? You know, am I prepared for the meeting coming up? And then after the meeting, is have I fulfilled enough of the criteria to move it on? Yeah, 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 yeah. The more the big deal, the more you have No, no, absolutely. And so when you when you work with companies, um, do they understand? Because here's, there's often resistance in sales to sales process, right? Um, people, often salespeople think, oh, that's going to, your process is going to restrict me or constrain me, when in fact, it's actually going to yeah, keep yeah. you focused. Exactly. It will, it will remove the human factor of me uh, being as a salesperson. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> how do you work with companies to understand um, that actually sales process is helpful to salespeople, not hindrance? Uh, you know, we usually define the sales process with the sales leaders because they're usually aware of that. Uh, they see, hey, I'm not able to help my, uh, mm -hmm. with the leaders it goes, uh, we have the poor forecast capability. Usually what we forecast, we don't hit. And they know how the forecast is made. It is like a combination of uh, some uh, some guesstimates. Mm -hmm. uh, so together we usually define the sales process. And then um, we invite salespeople and say, hey, let's do the loss review. Mm -hmm. uh, or show us your opportunity and let's pair them with the with the sales process. Uh, we guide them through the sales process, ask them, does it make sense? And I say, yeah, it does. It's how we make the business. And then they have something in the stage four, which is usually for them, oh, we're just about to sign a contract. And mm -hmm. we start, and we define the sales process in a way you have stage one, stage two, stage three. And between the stages, there are milestones. Right. So if I want to get from stage one to stage two, I need to complete the milestones. So I need to know the, uh, the pain of the customer, why the pain is there, what is the urgency, what are the stakeholders, for instance. That's usually what you get in the first stage. In the second stage, you, you go a little bit deeper in each and every aspect. And you try to calculate uh, the ROI, for instance. Mm -hmm. And then, then once you start asking them the question, so what's the decision-making process? Who, who is involved in the decision-making process? What are their roles? What are their, what, what's in it for them? Why the, that CEO should approve the budget for that? Why that person from the technical department should tell, give you the technical approval for that? And uh, what, he, what he will be looking at? Mm -hmm. Then you realize, okay, it's not stage four. <laughs> it's maybe <laughs> stage two or probably stage one. No. And then the salespeople say, "Oh, yeah, actually, we're missing quite a lot on our visa or on our opportunities." And that's how we get the buy-in. 
Yeah, and no, and that, I think that's a critical piece because sometimes people think, as you said, sales pro- sales process is just a bunch of stages, but it's the activities that that fall below each each stage that really defines it. And and the people and there are there are statistics out there. There was some research done by I think McKinsey some years ago that companies that not only have a defined stage um, sales process but have defined steps within each of those. Uh, each of those stages and are enforced, those are the companies that actually perform the best. Exactly, exactly. I was, uh, we actually see it always at our customers that uh, once you implement the sales process, you decrease the sales cycle because mm-hmm. then you don't, then you don't need 15 meetings to close the deal. You can close the deal within seven meetings and that means less of the time. You don't have to interact that much with the customer. Because within that one hour or 40 minutes, which you have them on the meeting, you get more of the information and you move faster. Mm-hmm. You have higher win rates because then you know, hey, I need to include this person, that person, and that person. And probably competition doesn't do that. And for sure, not in 100% of the cases, you get to the board member, you get to the C-level, yeah. you get to all, everybody you want. But if you start trying, then even if you make 70% of the cases, Still better than before because before that you get there only in ten percent of the cases or never. Yeah, and one of the other, one of the other byproducts then is that if you start to define things and you said proper qualification and I think the early stages are so critical because that's uh, because let's face it, salespeople as you said optimistic you know often have happy ears you know hear things that they want to hear um, and you know will move things along quickly. If you focus on, and especially sales managers focus on proper qualification in the early mm-hmm. stages, here's the here's the number one: you'll get better quality going through your 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 um, sales process, but you'll likely have less in your pipeline, and that's what scares people because sometimes people just like to have a bunch of stuff in their pipeline yeah, yeah, yeah. early stages, and when you clean it out, they get very nervous. <laughs> that's true. That's true. But that's what you want to get. Yes. Uh, because that's also one of the uh usually when we get to the customer and and uh, the salesperson tells me hey you know i have 40 opportunities in my pipeline i'm quite good okay with my pipeline i just need to move them a little bit <laughs> forward i say oh no you're in a big trouble mm-hmm. because uh, i guess they sit there all already for some time and they're not moving uh and once you start digging into them you see that uh, they shouldn't be there 80 percent of them so you kill them and they mm-hmm. remain only with eight opportunities and say, yeah, now you have the ones you should focus on. And if it is not enough for your targets, so at least you have the realistic view on what's your pipeline and you can start fixing your quota right away. You don't have to wait for end of the quarter when you start pushing the opportunities and they will start uh, postponing the decision or telling you, hey, actually, we decided not to buy it mm-hmm. because they actually never wanted to buy it. Uh, you just thought that they would. <laughs> And I think, and I, and I think, if there's one takeaway, uh, it's one takeaway from this. It's it's just that is the better you qualify early yeah. in your sales process, and it, and that means qualify out, qualify out stuff that's not that you don't have a better than average, you know, chance of 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 closing. That's not a good fit for you as a potential customer. That level of honesty, it's a little bit scary, as we said, because you could end up like have, oh, I've got 40, I got 40 opportunities, but reality, I only have eight and of which, you know, four are probably um, realistic. Um, but it then forces you to go and find more opportunities of the correct type. So it, it corrects a lot of behaviors in one go. Yeah. Uh, but what is also important to mention that sometimes I saw the leadership pushing uh, salespeople yeah to lie a little bit in the, or to be optimistic in their pipeline because they needed to report to investors, to CEOs. Mm-hmm. And uh, this is also not what, this shouldn't be happening in organization because you want, you want to have the leader telling you, hey, tell me what's true. It doesn't have to be nice, but tell me what's true, what is realistic, and then let's define the action steps. And yeah, we want to hit this quarter, but at least we'll hit another one. But mm-hmm. it will be lying in the pipeline and lying in the forecast. We want to hit any of the quarters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and it is in, and as you said, like there are there are some complications to it. When I was running a company that um, a couple of companies and they were, and there was a parent company, 
you know, that owned all of them. And, uh, and it was when, when we put in very rigorous, um, qualification process into our sales process, we probably halved our pipeline, right? Probably 50%. And immediately mm-hmm. the, the parent company came back and said, you only have half the pipeline you had at this time last year. You know, what's going on? And I was saying, well, we cleaned it out, but don't worry, we'll hit our targets. And they were really concerned. We hit our targets. And they were well, like, how did you do that with half the pipeline you had last year? I said, because we actually cleaned our pipeline focused. and focused on the reality. Yeah, but I that's... take your point. Your point is a very good one is that this can be scary to management and boards and everything to go, whoa, is everything collapsing here? And you're saying, no, it's actually, we're just revealing the truth. Yeah. Uh... I actually have one anecdote from one of our clients. He was at the at the moment when we were defi- redefining the sales process. They, they were looking for an investment. I say, you know, it was such a wrong timing because uh, we were presenting the pipeline to uh, to the potential investors, mm-hmm. and the month after we came there and we had only thirty percent of the pipeline. And they were asking, "What the hell happened?" <laughs> yeah. I know it's a, it's because it's it's we're so we're. we're we're, we're so comforted by, you know, it's like everything nowadays is volume, right? Everybody wants to have the most likes, the most this, the most that. And we've done the same thing with pipeline and it completely defeats. Because the other thing that people don't realize, like th- if you're spending any time on opportunities that are not a good fit, that are never going to, you're wasting valuable time from going out and finding the ones that are. Absolutely. Absolutely. I always, uh, yeah. For me, if I look at it, what is the number one killer of the companies and especially young companies is to having the maybe in the pipelines Yes, because they don't get enough of the feedback right away from the customers and they spend too much of their time. They run out of the cash uh, um, because they were investing into the wrong prospects, adjusting the uh, products uh, for the wrong prospects instead of kill them and look for another one, which will be, which will fit their product. Yeah, I, no, I agree. And I think, um, you know, startup companies often have, have make that mistake of not planning for enough like capital to get them through this period. And you're right. And what happens often is you just go, well, any customer is a good customer because I need revenue. And as you said, you end up like messing with your product and, and it never works at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. But it's hard in the same time as we discussed oh. that uh, at one point say, hey, I don't have anything in the pipeline. It hurts, but this, mm-hmm. n- no is no is good. Uh, yeah. Yes is better for sure, uh, but no is good as well because at least uh, you don't well, invest uh, incorrectly. Yeah. If, you can't, if, you can't, if, you can't, if you can't get a yes, a no is better than a maybe, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then just the last thing, when you work with sales managers and sales leaders because this is the most important thing because there's a tendency with a lot of sales leaders especially if they were promoted from being like the top salesperson and now there's is that they rather than focus in the early stage and help with qualification they go to the other extreme and they go to the late stage and they try to go in there and try to close stuff on people's behalf and all just focus in the wrong area as opposed to the really successful ones focus early on helping with the qualification process yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because you as a salesperson, you need that guidance. You need a little bit of drill at the beginning, especially yeah. if you're changing the behavior. So if you let me insert into the pipeline fix things which aren't qualified or two opportunities, guess what? The third and fourth and fifth won't, won't be qualified either because mm-hmm. uh, there's no crime if there's no judge for that. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, but if I come with the opportunity which is unqualified, you challenge me on my on my one on the pipeline review or QBR mm-hmm. or wherever you do that, and you tell me, hey, so get back, call them, and ask these two free questions. And uh, if you don't get the answer, you don't put it into the pipeline. So firstly, yeah. I will fix the opportunity right away, and the next opportunity I'll be working on, I'll pay attention to ask the right <laughs> questions so that I come to you, I don't repeat the same mistake. Yeah, no, that's it. I mean, you only have to do that once or twice and it becomes embarrassing enough, you know, that you make sure you have everything, everything uh, qualified properly next time. But again, it it gets back to this, the sales manager realizing that that's where they should be focused. Yeah. uh, And not just in the qualification for for me, you know, the qualification, yeah, you have the one Mm -hmm. when you open the opportunity, but then you qualify along the sales cycle till... Because you still get deeper and deeper and deeper in each and every aspect to understand the organization. 
Absolutely. But like I said, if you're diving in at the very end, there's nothing you can really do because that's all you no, can no. do at the end of the day is like, you know, demoralize the salesperson and probably offer a discount. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Because at the end of the day, once you once you're in RFP and you mm. lost your shots already because uh, you didn't talk to the right people and you didn't ask the right questions, then there's nothing you can do uh, other than just hope. Yeah, and exactly. offer discounts. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Well, listen, this has been great, Jakob. Uh, all of Jakob's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and Sales Doc. Yep. No. Uh, so. I started this company uh, seven years ago with a friend of mine when we, uh, after, at that time, we were still very, very young, or I, we were still, uh, but we thought that we can do sales better and teach organizations how to do better. Firstly, we're doing uh, sales outsourcing, but then we move more into the consultancy. What we focus uh, are tech companies uh, setting, up, uh, setting up processes, upskilling people. Uh, we either do that as a consultant or at some of the cases, we put our interim managers into the companies to build a sales team, put them up, uh, up to the track. And uh, then uh, once everybody is on the target, we find a replacement for us and make the make the handover. Uh, so yeah, Excellent. This, is, uh, this is about us. Yeah, fantastic. Well, I would encourage you, as I said, everything will be below the video. So go go check it out. Listen, thanks again, Jakob. Thanks for those insights. Thank you for watching and listening. And I will see you all again soon. Thank you. Okay. Thank you again, John.